Hello friends, how are we all doing? Today we're going to be chatting about the series I'm definitely... <laughs> the series I'm definitely going to finish this year. Now, <laughs> maybe we'll look, I never tend to look back on this list because it's more motivational and optimistic than like some of my other TBRs where I'm genuinely like trying to finish all those books. But maybe we'll look back on this list at the end of the year when I do my series stats wrap up video at the end of the year. But um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about the series I definitely wanna finish this year. I haven't made a ton of progress. I haven't really started any series this year, which is good. I've yet to start a series I'm continuing or I think that's about to change. But I've only really made progress I think in one series. So I thought it was time to do this video to really give myself some focus <laughs> and to make myself make some progress in books in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, really start, you know, focusing in on that again. Wishful thinking. Yeah. You're a dreamer. You dream a lot in your no, no. I just want to apologize. Please ignore the ring light glare. I know it probably doesn't bother some of you. My camera battery, there's a problem with it. <laughs> and so it has to be like plugged in. I need to go get a new one, I think. But the camera has to be plugged into a charger in order to work. And like, I can't, usually I'd have the camera when I'm filming here a bit more turned that way so you don't see the ring light glare that's lighting me, but I can't move the camera any further along. So this is what we're living with. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with today. But shall we just get into it? I obviously don't have all the books with me, which I hate. I love just holding up all the books when I talk about them. So I'll have to have some pictures of stuff, but I have got some of the sequels that I'm aiming to read. I did brought, bring quite a lot of sequels with me. So shall we just get into it? I have got 10 series that I really wanna finish this year. And I think quite a lot of these are fairly realistic. We'll say fairly realistic. <laughs> okay, first we have got the Elements of Cadence series by Rebecca Ross. The first is A River Enchanted. A second is A Fire Endless. I read A River Enchanted last year and the main reason I wanna finish this series is A, it's a duology, so let's just get it done, you know what I mean? And I can feel myself beginning to forget. <laughs> what this series is about. So obviously Rebecca Ross has become more well known for Divine Rivals, which I didn't love, but I did enjoy this a bit more. This series is very unique. It's set on this island where music is the magic system and there's all these kind of like spirits, kind of elemental spirits going on. And the interpersonal relationships were very interesting in this series. The way it examined, it had kind of different pairings of relationships. And I thought the way it examined familial relationships, friendship relationships, and romantic relationships was very nuanced and very different than a lot of stuff I've read. That's why it surprised me so much when I read Divine Rivals. And I was like, this is, this is TikTok trope, like heaven. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is just the most popular, like, in my opinion, unnuanced ways of portraying relationships. Oh my God, T Central over here. It's a completely different side of the coin to this series. I didn't love A River Enchanted. I think I gave it 3.5 or four stars. So I did enjoy it, but I didn't love it. So I would like to make progress in this series so I can like, tick it off. Cause otherwise I think it's a series I should let go. I don't own A Fire Endless. I do have the audio book on Everand. Now Scribd has become Everand. If you don't know that, <laughs> that's the news of the day. That's the breaking news. I don't know why they did it. I don't get me started because it did piss me off when they changed their name. So yeah, I have the audiobook to the second one, but this is a series, this isn't, there's other series on this list that I love and I'm really excited to continue. This is more one that I'm like, we get it, we gotta get it gone. You know, we gotta tick this series off or like give up on making progress in it. But yeah, very unique magic system. And I think I, I should just read it and finish the duology. Otherwise, I'll even if I give up, I'll always think about it. You know, think about what could have been. <laughs> then we have a series that I love, but I keep putting it off because I'm scared. So we have got Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is the sequel or prequel, I should say, to Legends and Lattes, which was my second favorite book of last year. I'm so nervous. <laughs> So Bookshop and Bone Dust, we're following Viv when she was more in her like fighty fighty, like crusade-y, I don't know what the right word is for what she did. But you know, she was in her past life before she created the bakery in Legends and Lattes. And I know we're kind of in this library in this one and there's like a little owl dog creature and like a little rat, there they are. <laughs> and I love Legend of Latte so dearly. I've never had a reading experience like that again. The way I felt reading that book, how comforted and cozy I felt, I have never felt like that again, ever, ever. I have never had that feeling again. I just wanna feel safe again. <laughs> 
that made me feel so safe and protected. I'm just nervous, what if this doesn't match up? I'm really concerned. Bitch, you're fired. <laughs> So I don't actually have any plans to read this like ASAP. I don't have any set plans to read it, but I know I'm probably gonna love it. I'm just feeling the pressure. But as of what I know, please let me know if you know anything else. But as of what I know, there's no news about there being more books in this series. I don't know if Charles Bowdry is gonna keep writing in this series or maybe branch out and write a different book standalone or different series next. So in my mind, when I read this, I have finished the series. It's the very least I've got up to date with it, which I now track differently than like currently reading. So at least I will have made progress on it. But from what I've heard, there hasn't been any other books announced. So yeah. <sighs> I can't. <laughs> then we have the Hell's Library series by AJ Hackwith. The first is the Library of the Unwritten, which I read a little while ago. And for my birthday, one of you, who very kindly gifted it to me, Emma, very kindly gifted me. I haven't got my sticky, usually I stick all my wish list notes like in the front of the book, but they're all, the ones I got for my birthday are just floating loose because I don't have my tape with me, my washi tape. And it's, it's causing me anxiety thinking about all those notes that could fall out. <laughs> Emma very kindly sent me the Archive of Forgotten, so I've got to read this and The God of Lost Works. There's two more. This is a trilogy. I've read the first one. I mean, most of these I've read. The Actually, no, some of these I've read more than the first one. <laughs> That's not normal. And I think, you know, you should maybe get some help or something. Why do I love starting series so much? I just really like starting series. But then, as I my experience has been, I love making progress in series. There's been so many series where like, the first book is the weakest book in the series to me once I've completed it. And like my love for the series and the characters grow. I'm just awful at making progress. So the Library of the Unwritten is a place where unwritten books go in hell. And we've got in it a character, oh, it's all coming back to me. I'm remembering more than when I thought this on the spot. You've got a character called Hero who is like one of an, an unwritten hero from the story. Oh, and he wants to go find his author and it's like a quest and you gotta stop him because like authors and the unwritten characters can't meet. That's what it is. It all came back to me. I was like put on the spot when I unhauled this. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is the second in the series. I will have to read a recap for the library other unwritten because it has been probably like a year and a half now since I read that. But I would like to, you know, make progress in it and just finish it. Megan, you just have to finish series. I will be doing a few more probably series wipeout episodes um, later this year. I haven't got any planned up until, I think I've got all my vlogs planned up until April, but maybe after that I'll, I'll do a few. I'll do a few. <laughs> series wipeout episodes. Oh no, I do have one planned, but I'm not sure when I've got it. No, we do have a fun one planned. I am excited to make progress in the series. I really did enjoy the library unwritten. It was very nice writing style. It's a very unique premise. So we're gonna try and make progress in this bad boy. Next, I am determined to finish the Sinclair's Mystery series this year. So this is the second one. I just read this in my most recent wrapped up retro episode. This is The Mystery of the Jeweled Moth. These are a middle grade mystery series by Catherine Woodfine where you've got this group of characters who work at kind of like the Selfridges equivalent, work at London's big department store in the Edwardian period. And they're solving mysteries. It tends to be mysteries around items. Like they tend to be finding items. It's not murder mysteries or anything like that. It's middle grade. <laughs> Calm down. But um, I had such a fun time reading this and I really, whilst it's fresh, again, I wanna finish the series. So I have two more in the series. I have The Painted Dragon and The Midnight Peacock that I need to read and I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna read them. Guys, I'm gonna read them. <laughs> Promise? No, I am because this is one of the oldest books on my TBR. That's obviously why I read it for Wrapped Up Retro. So it had been almost four years since I'd read the first one. And now I've read the second one. I'm just, I'm raring to go. I really enjoyed this one so much more than the first one. I thought the characters grew. I thought the pacing of this one was really great. Like in terms of middle grade mystery, I thought it was paced really, really well. It had a lot of intriguing elements to it, a lot of new interesting characters and dynamics to it. So please make me finish this series because like I can't read like I can't go another four years if I carry on at the rate I'm going it would take me 12 years to finish a middle grade mystery series that has four books in it like that's just not on like I can do that for like Robin Hobb or something like you know big scary fantasy series this is freaking middle grade mystery just Megan get a grip <laughs> finish 
this series. Good God, get a grip, girl. <laughs> yeah, I really, really enjoyed reading the second in the series, so it's made me a lot more motivated to finish this series off this year. Next on my list is the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series by Toshikazu Karaguchi. So I have read Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe, and Before Your Memory Fades. And the next book is Before We Say Goodbye, and I have decided this is gonna be my last book in a series. I have enjoyed these, but my favorite was book one, and I feel like it's kind of depreciating for me over time with a lot of the, the stories being somewhat similar, a lot of the emotions being somewhat similar. Like I know in Japanese, there's like loads more books already published, but for me, I've decided like, I'm gonna read this one and then the series is done for me. And I feel like that's nice. Like the four books in the series is not bad. This isn't a series that if I decide to stop it, I'm like, truly missing out. Yes, there's some ongoing narratives, but like a lot of what makes up these stories is individual new characters and new stories. There are, like I said, some ongoing narratives with characters that we've had throughout the book, but I don't feel like I'm gonna be currently, I mean, I could feel differently <laughs> after finishing this book and I could be like, I'm continuing, but I currently don't feel like I'd be missing out if I did not make progress in this series. So this is a magical realism series. I'm sure most of you have heard of it, where we've got this cafe where you can travel back in time, but you can only, travel back in time to something that happened in the cafe where you know someone came to the cafe. So you can go back in time to see them, but you have to drink your coffee before the coffee gets cold. Otherwise you'd like become a ghost and die and get like stuck in the past or something, I don't know. So um, there is that that kind of short, all these, all these incidences where people travel back in time to see their loved ones, it's only for a short time, right? So it's always emotional because there's like a lot that, these people often want to get off their chest. I really love the first one. The first one made me cry a lot. And then the second, third, the third one was just the weakest to me. And I just feel like we can read this last one. You know, it's a quick read, but then I'm ready to kind of like, that's the end for me personally. So that'll be finishing off another series once I read this. And it's so short, you know, get a grip. <laughs> Number six is another duology. It is the Song of Wraiths and Ruin series by Rosanne A. Brown. So the first one is a Song of Wraiths and Ruin, and the second one is a Psalm of Storms and Silence. This is similar to the Rebecca Ross one, where it's a duology, so like, I need to just finish it, but it's not a series I feel super made, <laughs> motivated to finish. They're both in the same bracket for me, where I'm like, just finish it. It's a duology, just read this other book. But I don't feel, they're not like ones that I'm like, oh my God, I'm raring to read that. Do you know what I mean? Whereas some of these other series are, like Bookshops and Bone Dust, or some other ones we've got coming up in the list. I'm like, okay, I'm, I feel very excited. These ones almost feel like a little bit obligation-y. <laughs> I do not remember saying those things and those things were not meant to be. That was, that was not meant to be serious. I just don't like DNF in the series and I liked these first books enough to want to continue. The first one, A Song of Race and Ruin, this is like an African inspired fantasy where we've got these two characters who want to kill each other, but like not because they hate each other, but because it kind of suits ends that they want to achieve. And I did really enjoy it, but I've just forgotten a lot of it. And I just haven't felt super motivated to pick up the sequel, but I own it. I own the sequel, so I need to just read it. So please make me, please make me. That one I really wanna get off my list. Like I really should have finished that last year. So I just wanna complete it because like I said, I really enjoyed the first book enough to wanna continue. There's just something about it that I don't feel super excited to continue. Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> Then the next on my list, this one, like, you know, I might be lying to you a little bit. <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there. I'm not lying, I'm not lying, I'm not lying, I'm not lying. But I will be happy if I make progress in the series. This trilogy, I'll be happy if I just read the second one, but it would be amazing if I could finish this trilogy. And that is the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. I have read Assassin's Apprentice and the next in the series is Royal Assassin. I really enjoyed Assassin's Apprentice. It got me really excited and it made me realize there are certain like types of more intimidating fantasy that I can read. I'm, I'm listen guys, I'm gonna start Brandon Sanderson this year. I keep saying it, but I am, you know? And this is a series I would really like to make progress in a fantasy series I'd like to make progress in but like it's over 600 pages it feels so intimidating that I'm scared but you know the next one is Assassin's Quest obviously this like Robin Hobb universe what's it called is it called Realm of the Elderling is that this one because then you've got the live ship traders trilogy then you've got the tawny man trilogy what's the soldier son I haven't even heard of that and then the Rain Wild Chronicles so there's lots in this <laughs> universe um and so this is kind of like you know, a trilogy within a longer series, but I'm counting them as individual series. Like, I'm not, you know, once I finish Assassin's Quest, I finished a fucking series, okay? I'm feeling in 
incredibly intimidated by this. If you don't know, we're following Fitz in the first book, who is a bastard son of the king. And he's kind of bought into the royal court, but not within like the actual family. He's like a stable boy. I really, really enjoyed the first book. I thought Robin Hobb's writing was absolutely incredible. I keep trying to get my dad to read this series because he likes fantasy. And I think he's maybe read it in the past and didn't, he's like, ah, oh, you know, there's loads of fantasy I keep trying to get him to read. And there's loads of fantasy he keeps trying to get me to read. But he, I don't want to read his fantasy. He wants me to read Wheel of Time and shit. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Steve, I am not that kind of girl. <laughs> I can't do it. My heart is saying no. But yeah, I really loved the first one. So I'd be very proud of myself if I could get over my intimidation and make progress in this this year. Then we have The Regency Fairy Tales by Olivia Atwater. The first is Half the Soul. Then I do own 10,000 Stitches. And then I think the last one is Long Shadow. Long Shadow came out in like 2021. So I'm pretty sure this series is finished. I'm, I'm in my brain, I'm like, yes, this is one I could finish, you know, because I hate when the series is ongoing a little bit, you know, and I'm like, oh, can't finish it. These are Regency romanticies, kind of, you know, they're like set in Regency England, Jane Austen kind of era, but they are fey, fairy romances. I enjoyed Half a Soul. It's probably the most successful romanticy that I have read for me because it's brought up by the Regency nurse because I'm like, oh, I can get into this. <laughs> Where's Mr. Darcy, you know what I mean? It's playing on a certain interest of mine, but I didn't like love it. But the thing is with this series, we're following different romances, different pairings. So like, I feel like if the trope combo in Half a Soul didn't necessarily work for me, if this one does, then I'm very excited. When I read Half a Soul, I was like, this one in particular isn't really working 100% for me, like five star energy, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that I could really enjoy a later one in the series. So, oh, it's got a Cinderella twist. Okay, I'm really excited. I'm gonna make progress and hopefully finish the series this year because they're nice and short. This one's only like, 240 pages, so they're not super long. Next, we have The Singing Hills Cycle by Nee Vo. I have read Empress of Salt and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain, and I own Into the Riverlands and Mammoths at the Gate, and then Brides of High Hill comes out this year, and the aim is to read all three. I'm actually gonna be reading these soon. I'm gonna be reading these maybe the next couple weeks at some point. So I am gonna make progress in the series, but then I also want to read Brides of High Hill as well. I love this series and I can't believe I haven't made progress in it in a while. This is basically, we're following Claire Chi as they go around and gather stories and kind of note down stories and collect stories from people. They are such beautiful books that I keep saying, I love how they honor and adore and <laughs> put on a pedestal the art of storytelling and different arts of storytelling. Something I've noticed is the different books that so far, the characters we met have different ways of telling their story. And I just think it's so beautiful. Nevo's writing is incredible. So I'm super excited to make progress in the series. Into the Riverlands, Mammoths at the Gate, I'm gonna be reading you. Oh, it's so good, guys. My goal is to read all three, including Brides of High Hill, that I will be able to read this year. But at the very least, I am gonna make progress and read the next two in the next couple weeks. And then this is another one I would maybe be happy to just make progress in. This is another trilogy where if I read the second book, like it's okay. <laughs> um, but that is the Bear Town series by Frederick Backman. So I've read Bear Town. The next one is Us Against You. So in this series, we are in a small hockey town in Sweden. And in the first book, the town is divided by something that happens and kind of put on opposing sides of this fight of this issue that happens. I don't want to spoil it because I think it is very effective to kind of wander into the book and not realize what is about to hit you. That's what happened to me. I think it's incredibly emotionally impactful. But in this one, we are also following the rival town head. It's about kind of the rivalries between the teams. And it says by the game's end, someone from Bear Town will be dead. So it's like a little bit, I don't know if it's a murder mystery, if it's more of a thriller. But again, this is a one where I really, really enjoyed the writing. I, I think I've enjoyed a lot of Swedish translated fiction that I've read. I've read quite a bit, I feel like. Is the, the elder, an elderly lady is up to no good? Swedish? Yes, oh my God, it's Swedish. So I enjoy <laughs> Swedish translated fiction. There's something about when, it's very interesting, the art of translation. There's something about when the cadence of Swedish language is translated to English. I really enjoy that. And I I think it's interesting because Bear Town could be a standalone. Like I think it's a very effective book and it's the kind of narrative arc where I'm kind of like, I don't know where we're gonna go from here. I don't know how these characters can like have another book together. You know what I mean? So I'm very much excited to read this. Frederick Rackman, listen, he's gonna put you through it. He's gonna, you know. <laughs> 
put you through something. I'm really, really excited to make progress in the series and maybe finish it this year. We shall see. Okay, everyone, that is the 10 series I must finish this year. We'll see, actually. I think it'll be interesting to look back and see how many of these I finish because I feel like I'm going to finish quite a few of them. But, like, that might be, you know... <laughs> That may be optimism talking, but please let me know what you thought of any of these books. Yeah, any of these books or any of the continuations in the series, please let me know. Also let me know what series you're hoping to finish this year. And if you got to the end of the video, put a snowflake emoji because it's, you know, cold in bear town. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.